it's turkey time. Yes, the turkey is done. It has rested. Our bird is beautiful with the crispy golden skin. We've got the, um, the sauce that's left over, a little bit probably pulled out for some gravy. The rest of it left over for making turkey stock or cat food and dog food, which is a different video. But it is time to slice the bird. There's a lot of ways to slice it, but I'm gonna show you my favorite. It is super efficient, very simple. It really breaks down into four steps and it comes out with great presentation and preserves the best moisture in your bird. Okay, so set up your workspace. I need something to put the turkey on once it's sliced for serving. So some sort of serving plate, serving platter, whatever you're using. I have this bowl put to the side for putting the bones in as I pull them out. And then I have a cutting board that is nice and roomy. Nice. What I have here is my favorite chef's knife and then also a flexible boning blade if you have it. If you don't have it, use what you have um, because the, the biggest thing that you can do to help yourself out is to make sure your blade is extremely sharp. That makes a huge difference. The other thing that I have is something that I do not get out terribly frequently because I don't roast meat all that often anymore, but this is an electric carving knife and uh, Overall, it is super helpful. I tested it uh, the other day with a, with a bird and the results were dramatically different between my chef's knife, which I love, and this blade. So I will do one side with a regular knife and one side with a carving knife, y'all can see. But let's get started. Let's talk, um, I'm gonna move the bird onto my carving board. Here we go, and this is going out of the way for right now. I'm not gonna throw any in the way though, that's good stuff. Now, you'll see that I have the little built-in turkey thermometer is popped out. That was in there, but I also used a, a regular little digital probe th thermometer to monitor the temperature because it allowed me to check in a few locations because Yes, those thermometers do in general work, but sometimes there'll be a cold spot somewhere else inside the bird and that can get people sick. If you need this meat to reach 165 degrees Fahrenheit to kill the bacteria, the biggest concern is salmonella, but there's several other uh, pathogenic organi organisms that can live on the outside of your meat. So 165 is key, cook it until it is there. Now, if you run into trouble with this slow cooking method, it seems like the bird's temperature is just never rising, you can increase the oven temperature to about, up to about 250 and it will still give the slow roast effect, but it will cook faster. You just have to monitor it. I cook with that probe thermometer inside the bird the entire time and I just leave it cooking until it hits 165 and once one part of it hits 165, or start checking other parts and then you cook it until every part that you check is 165. Let's get started carving. First, step one, we're gonna get these legs off. If yours came, some turkeys come with twine that you can snip. This one came with this plastic thing that pops off. And it is going to go away. There it is, I don't really want that. So, first things first. Oh, also note, there is some juice seeping out of the bird, but not tons. That is because it rested well, and that's important. You want that rest time for your bird. So, here we are. We've got a drumstick, we've got a thigh, we've got wings, and a breast. And then we have the same thing on the other side. Step one is get it, taking care of your thighs and your drumsticks. So to start that process, you're gonna insert your blade, whichever one you choose, down into that crease in between the drumstick and the breast, and you're just gonna start separating. This meat is super well cooked. So here it comes. There it goes. There's a bone right here. You're going to want to get underneath it and pop it out. There it is. 
So this is slow cooked. So it's gonna be, it's ready to literally fall off the bone. So I got, we're halfway through step one here. Here is the drumstick, crispy skin and all. And I have a nice, lovely chunk of thigh meat right here. For dark meat lovers, that is going to be sliced enough. If you want, you can chop that more before you serve it. All right, I'm gonna put that nice juicy bone right in my bone bowl. That's gonna be used for stock, or in my case, for cat and dog food. More dark meat. Leave the wing on for the time being. It does sort of help stabilize your bird. I'm gonna quickly do the other side. Oh, it is so, it is so tender. It is just falling apart. That is the beauty of this super slow roast. The more the turkey dries out, the more difficult it gets to uh, slice it. Check this out. Beautiful. <laughs> All right. Your dark meat turkey lovers are just going to be super excited with this. See, I've got some more thigh meat coming off. Nice big chunk of it with the skin. And another big chunk. Now, again, with conventional cooking, you're gonna get something that more resembles a roast that actually does need to be sliced and chopped and separated and cut. But you could tell I was just using this little blade to sort of manipulate things around. So we have, let me get this out of the way. There we go. That is going in my bone bowl. The bone bowl is super important. Those are treasures. So you're, we're not gonna eat them now. We're gonna use them for sure. Now, we, are, we need to cut along this right here, which is called the keel bone. So this, like if you're looking at the front of the bird, it's the part that's the underside of the front of the breast. But for us, it is our guideline for getting the breast away from the, the bones. So it's very hard right in the middle. I'm gonna go ahead and start working my knife in there. And this is, by the way, we're on to step two, well, two already. Here it comes. See with the slow roast, it, it almost cooks right off the bone. I'm just sort of working. The skin is actually the trickiest part to cut right now because we got it so nice and crispy. All right, so here we go. Just gently separating that breast meat from the bone. One breast. I'm gonna set that to the side. Look how clean that came off. Now, all of this meat, I may, I'll add it, the dark meat to that pile. Let's get the other breast off. Let's see. The trick is finding a nice spot to go through the skin, because again, you wanna keep the skin on the meat through this cutting and serving process, and then people can decide for themselves whether they're gonna eat the skin or not. But make sure and give them the option. It keeps the moisture in the cut of meat as you're serving it. There we go. Look how clean that's coming off, fantastic. Yours will do the same thing with the slow roast process. It's that slow, low temperature cooking that leaves it with this great consistency. All right, now I'm at the awkward bottom. And again, it's with the skin that sharp knife is where it comes in handy. It's piercing and then separating it. Now you'll see there's a little bit of meat left on there. I can put that on my plate right now. Now, at this point, these wings, if you have someone that loves to gnaw on turkey wings, by all means, let them gnaw, that's fine. Or you can put it straight into your bone bowl and it's, they're perfect for stock and for cat food. I'm gonna go ahead and take that one off. But this meat right here is beautiful. We're gonna go ahead and add it to our dark meat mountain. Now this side stayed on the bone a little bit. So this is step three, which is the wings. 
see how our step three was kind of almost invisible because our meat is slow, so tender with the slow cooking process. There we go. We'll put that skin in this pile. There the bone goes. All right, I'm gonna move the carcass. We can either put that in our bone bowl or back in the, uh, the pan behind me. Our fourth and, oh, look at this meat. Okay, you see meat like this, if you feel like pulling it off and adding it onto your platter, that's fine, or else you can leave it for the cat food or for, um, for cooking down for stock. Just, just know that it, this is very valuable and don't just throw it in the garbage. There's so much that we can do with it. Okay, final step. This is where my electric carving knife did super well. I have two breasts here on the plate. Now, a little rosemary sprig. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in my gonna be cooked down later pile. Let's see, I'm gonna show, demonstrate what the chef's knife does, which is okay. But then we'll do the second one with the carving knife and you guys can make your own choice. The goal when you're slicing it is to go in this direction, which is against the grain. The muscle grain runs this way. We're gonna slice at an angle against the grain, which will help it to stay juicier. But the trick is to try and keep the skin on each slice. So here we go. Here we go. Come on, skin. There we go. And again, this meat is falling apart too, much like the dark meat. Uh, dark meat always trumps as far as the moisture goes because it has the fat that melted down within it as well as sitting in the basting sauce. Come on. Oh no, I'm pushing my turkey off. All right. And I just sharpen these knives. It's just, it really, this when the skin gets that crisp, it is a challenge. But look, we managed to get it sliced into nice serving size pieces. The skin is still on. And a quick transfer to our platter. Well, that wasn't the most graceful transfer. One Michelin star off for me. <laughs> okay, now with this final breast, Let's look at what the electric carving knife does. And for me, I, I preferred this. It's like having two, it's having two serrated blades that run back and forth against each other. And I like the result. We'll see how it does this. Time. that result better. Look how well that came off. The skin is intact. It cut beautifully against the grain or across the grain, I should say. And I've got some nice slices to move over. Either way, use whatever you have. If you have an electric carving knife that someone gave you 25 years ago that you really haven't used, I say pull it out and give it a shot and see what you think. If you do not have an electric carving knife, I don't think you need to go out and get one for you know, the very occasional large roast or turkey or anything like that that you happen to cook. But I did like the results. So there we are. We have turkey for a large party. We've got a carcass and some bones for our stock. And we also have the basting sauce back behind us that we're gonna use later. I'm gonna use it to make some cat and dog food. You can also cook it down to make bone broth and, and, and turkey stock all very viable options to do, but in, in, with any of them, the goal is to not waste any part of it because it's all super fantastic for us. Again, what you need to carve your bird is a place to cut it. You need something to cut it with, something that is sharp, and something to put it on, and something to save your remnants in. But that's it. I hope you have success carving your bird. Let me know how it goes. If you like this video, subscribe There's and check out some of the other ones. Thank you.